Hello children, welcome to the class. This is your English grammar class and we are studying verbs. As you all know, we have studied the definition of verbs and we have already discussed the kinds of verb, transitive and intransitive verbs. Today we are going to discuss a new topic, main or principal verbs and auxiliary verbs or helping verbs. So before going to start, I would like, a, like to share a beautiful thought with you. Believe you can and you will. Believe you can and you will. It means believe yourself and you can do wonders. God gives you powers. You just recognize yourself. God created you unique, unique creature. So every person having different quality, different behavior, they have to recognize themselves. And one thing is more important that work hard. If you are working hard, so you will achieve success. So always believe in yourself and work hard. So that make you a better person. So for this note, I would like to start my class and we are going to discuss today main or principal verb and auxiliary verb. As you all know, the action words are called verbs. And we have discussed earlier in our video that transitive verb, the verbs with object and intransitive verb is verb with without any object and today we are going to study main or principal verb so what are the main and principal verb first we have to know this first main or principal verbs are also called lexical verbs so this is the main part or you can say the important part of a sentence. And if we are going to write the definition of uh, uh, main or principal verbs, that is you should understand first that main verb is an important role in the sentence. If I am writing over here, Ram writes. So here you can see, writes is a main verb. It can be changed if I am writing, writing or if I am going to write, wrote. But here you can see the main verb is a still main verb. Or this gives you meaning of whole sentence. Here you can rhyme writes. If I am going to write over a rhyme wrote. So it is also this remain same. But it can change. It can change its form. But the meaning will always remain same. So this we have to understand. Now I am going to uh, give you a brief introduction about main verbs. The main verbs is also called the lexical verb or the principal verb. Principal means it's a main verb. And this term refers to the important verb in the sentence. Here you have already seen this. Ram writes, this is the important part of this sentence. So, the one that typically shows the action or state of being of the subject. Now here, from this example, we can understand that this is the main subject. Subject of a sentence. And here you can see the action and state of a subject. It's showing. So this is called main verb. This is called principal verb. This is called lexical verb. The three are one. Now the main verb can stand alone. It doesn't require anyone. 
to support but or they can be used with the helping verbs the first is it is i have already written alone it's not having any helping verb or anything else over here you can see ram writes so it is alone the verb is here alone and it's give you meaning it gives you meaning so you can understand ram writes ram ram wrote these are giving the meanings it can stand alone or it can add a helping word also so in both type it can be used in the sentence these those the help main verb that verb is called auxiliary verb or helping verbs but before going to start auxiliary verb we should know more about main verb or principal verb so i am going to write the definition of main verb or principal verb main verb or principal verb it is also called lexical verb now the definition of the verb main or principal verb this term refers to the important verb in the sentence in the sentence the one can one that typically shows the action or state of being of the subject of the subject so here this term refers to the important verb in the sentence the one that typically shows the action or state of being of the subject and it can stand alone main verb can stand alone stand alone or they can be used with be used with helping verb and this we will be study later so these are called main verb or principal verb so how can we recognize this is the main verb of a sentence now if i am going to tell you read write run drink and eat these are all main verb because it can gives the meaning of any sentence a full meaning so these are the main verbs so now we are going to study first we just have a look on this definition this term refers to the important verbs a verb in the sentence the one that typically shows the action or state or being of the subject main verb can stand alone or they can be used with helping verbs so this we have to learn because whenever 
the question is asked where is the main verb of a sentence we can uh, memorize this uh, definition and we can recognize the main verb in the sentence so this is very important for you now we are uh, going to uh, see that what are the main verbs and how we are we are able to recognize the main verb now here you can see main verbs words like eat dance drink eat write these are all main verbs and we add an ending dance ed danced work ing working eat ing eating e eat eaten so if we are adding at the end of the main verb something it can change the form of the verb but the meaning will still remain same so these are the main verb now if we are going to add in eat ing and it will become eating dance plus ed so danced but here you can see we change them to get other form we have change we have already added over here ing and here you can say see ed so it can change the form but the meaning or the you can say the word main verb will remain same because it is eat plus ing but the main verb is here we have added this suffixes to make the in the different forms so one thing we have to remember always if we are going to write awake and in past form we are writing over here awoke so here you can see this main verb is remaining same and it can change the form it can change the form but it's give you total meaning so here you can see children eat dance awake these are all main verbs so main verb what are the main verb write eat dance at awake these are all main verbs these are called main verbs now we are moving to auxiliary verbs or helping verbs helping verb meaning that can support anything that is called help so this helping verb is going to support main verb suppose is if i am going to write over here ram is dancing so dancing dance is a main verb and we have added ing this become in continuous tense but the main verb is dance and now to making present continuous tense we have to add is is so is over here helping verb or auxiliary verbs so now we are going to study this let's start auxiliary verbs and helping verb or helping verbs auxiliary verbs or helping verbs now a verb used in forming the tenses moods 
and voices of other words. The primary auxiliary verb in English are be, do, have, has. These are the primary auxiliary verbs. And if we are talking about modal auxiliary verb, so can, could, will, would, shall, should. These are the modal auxiliary verbs. So here you can see there are two kinds of auxiliary verb. First is primary auxiliary verb is am, are, was, were. These are the primary auxiliary verb. And the modal auxiliary verbs having a different criteria that is can, could, shall, should, these type of the will, would, these are called modal auxiliary verbs. So here you can see auxiliary verbs or helping verbs are those used in forming the tenses, moods and voices of other verbs. The primary auxiliary verbs in English are be, do and have and modal auxiliaries are can, could, may, might, will, would. So here you can see auxiliary verbs or helping verbs having two forms. First is primary, primary auxiliary verb and second is model. In primary auxiliary verb is am, are, has, have, do, does, these are. And here you can see in modal auxiliary verbs can, could, can, could, may, might, shall, should, will, would. So it is divided into two forms. First is primary auxiliary verb, second is modal auxiliary verb. But their works are same. They are going to support the main verb. And it can change the forms, it can change the states, it can change the moods of a action. Action, it, it is changing the action's mood. It can change action's uh, situations or you can say uh, the state, it can be changed. So, we are going to learn about auxiliary verb more are forms of the verbs like be and have and here you can see in your book also it is given the verb be can be used is as am are was were the verb have can be used had has will have shall have do or does did can as could they are all helping verb they are used to form tenses Questions, negative sentences or to show the manner of action. So, we have already seen the definition of auxiliary verb. It can change the moods. It can change the state of an action. So, here you can see with the help of auxiliary verb, we can change or we can form questions. We can form negative sentences, we can form tenses and the manner of the action. We can form with the help of the helping or auxiliary verbs. Now, and it is, it can form all these and it can not expressed by the principal of which are expressed by the principal verb. So, it will at always attach with the principal verb. So this we have to remember always. It is only for to help to change the form of the sentence, the form of the verb and the state of the verb and you can the mood of the verb. But it is always 
helping the main verb. So this we have to learn or remember always. So I am going to give some examples of auxiliary verb or helping verb. From this example you can recognize where are the auxiliary verbs and where are the main verb. Now she has danced beautifully. Example is she has danced beautifully. Now here you can see has is a helping verb or auxiliary verb and danced here you can say this is main verb or principal verb. Now next example I am going to give you he is playing outside or she is playing outside. Now here you can see if we have learned the helping verb can change the tenses, can change the moods of a verb. This example, from this example you can recognize that she has danced beautifully. Now she has danced. Now here you can see it is present perfect tense. She has danced. The third form of the verb we have used over here. So in present perfect tense we, we are using has. Now here you can see she is playing outside. She is playing. Here you can see this is helping verb or auxiliary verb. And this is playing. This is main verb. And it is helping. Helping verb is helping to change this mood of the or tense of the sentence. She is playing outside. It means it is a present continuous tense. And in present continuous tense we always remember we are using is, am, are plus ing. Now here you can see in main verb we have added over here ing and to change the mood or tense of the sentence or verb we have added over here is. From these example you can understand. So helping verb is only the work of the helping verb to change the tenses, to make quotients, to make negative sentences from these words. So these are the very important, uh, they are having a very important role in English grammar. So without this, we cannot make sentence properly. So if the verb is there, so we have to use auxiliary verbs or helping verbs. So they are playing very major role in making sentences. So children, if I will give you some more example to understand the, the work of auxiliary verbs. So I am going to give you the next example. Example number 3. Neha does sleep every afternoon. Neha does sleep every afternoon. Here you can see does is auxiliary verb. And sleep here you can see this is main verb. Neha does sleep every afternoon. Now next is Snigdha or Suman. Can sing sweetly. Can sing sweetly. Here you can see we have used model auxiliary verb and this is auxiliary verb. 
and this is main verb. So this way, here does and can, these are all helping verbs. So this way we can understand what are main verbs and what are auxiliary verbs or helping verbs. So now we are going to solve some exercises which are based on these two concepts. So let's start. This is exercise number F and you can find in your Mastering Grammar book page number 53. So take out your Mastering Grammar book page number 53 and this exercise is F, exercise number F. Now read the following sentences and fill in the blanks with appropriate form of principal or auxiliary verbs given in the bracket. In the bracket it is already written over here and we have to choose the correct one. So now exercise number E. Sheetal dash a talented girl. Now here B is written over here. So we are going to write in first is Sheetal is a talented girl. Now second is Gagan plays in the garden every day. In third, he dash milk while watching television every morning. He drinks. Third is, he drinks. Now in fourth, she dash to sing. She likes to sing. In fifth, Gaurav dash down from the Goava tree yesterday when he saw me. Now here we have to write in the past tense. So Gaurav jumped. Gaurav jumped. In six, he dash a strong soldier before he got injured in an accident. He was. Now seventh. They dash told to sing loudly. They were. Now we are moving to exercise number G. Number G. Fill in the blanks with suitable verbs from the brackets. The army dash the enemy camp at night. Now here the words are given attacked or paraded. Now here we are going to write this. In first we have written is, plays, drinks, likes, jumped, was and were. Just complete it in your book. And now we are moving to exercise number G. Exercise number G, fill in the blanks with suitable verbs from the brackets. Now in first we are going to write attacked. In second, the river dash across the town, flooded or flowed. Now here the flowed, we are going to write flowed. Third, the postman dash the parcel yesterday. Now words are given over here, delivered or through. So it is delivered. Now fourth is the ship dash when it is stuck an iceberg. Sank or sailed? The ship sank. Now fifth, the audience dash at the graceful performance of Ballad, dancer, cheered or hooted. Now here, cheered. In six, 
Eagles dash up in the sky usually at dawn. Now here soar or zoom. Now here we are going to write Eagles soar up in the sky usually at dawn. Now in 7th, the building dash into the darkness where there was a power cut. Plunged or dipped? The building plunged. Plunged into darkness when there was a power cut. Now exercise number H. Read the following passages and use appropriate verbs in verbs to fill in the blanks. So now we are going to uh, do this. When Ganesh saw a snake, he was shocked. I am going to write. This is exercise number H. Now, when Ganesh saw, saw a snake, he was shocked. He was shocked. Now, he ran. He ran down the road and picked. And picked up a stick in his hand he aimed he aimed it at the snake and sent it flying flying in the air as soon as the stick fell On the snake, it disappeared. It disappeared and was not to be seen anymore. Grandma always said, Grandma always said that he was a brave boy. Now this exercise is complete in the book and few things we have to before closing this uh, class or this video I would like to uh, remind all these things which we have done today or yesterday. A verb is a word that is used to denote an action, the condition of the subject and what is possessed by the subject. Now this we have to remember always. Now next is a verb which requires an object to complete its meaning is called transitive as you all know. And whereas a verb which does not require an object to complete its meaning it is called intransitive verb. But makes good sense by itself. It is called an intransitive verb. The word chips. So this is verb and it gives a meaning also. Now the second point. Transitive and intransitive verb that need a help of some word or words to complete the sense of the sentence are called verb of incomplete prediction like the soldier fought bravely. Now here the subject complement is there as we have done yesterday. Now auxiliary or helping verbs are form of verb like be and have. Be can be used as is, am, are, was, were and have can be used as has, had, will have, shall have, do, and as does, did, or can, or as could. So this is uh, primary auxiliary and uh, model auxiliary. These words, verbs we have to learn. So we have completed this chapter and I hope uh, you understood all the concepts of verbs and if you have any doubt you can 
uh, ask in the online classes also i will be always ready to give the answers if you have any confusion regarding verbs so that's all for today have a good day complete your exercise and learn the definitions also so bye bye